Pretty much. All right, cool. Moving on, let's talk Clippers Thunder. As you told me earlier, this is a big game and a big test for the Clippers. Obviously, last podcast we talked about the Clippers and, and the Thunder, and, and the Clippers did not have a good showing against the Warriors. Blake did not have a good showing. Yo, let me, let me let me. And the Thunder themselves have been struggling. I do not believe in the Thunder. Talk about Blake real quick. Blake, 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 Blake. This is your team now, dog. You can't be coming out here having those type of games that you just had against Drake. I don't give a fuck who you playing against. You can't come come out here having those type of games that you had against Draymond Green. I don't care who you playing against. I don't care if you playing against Dennis Rodman. You can't come out here and have those type of games. For one, the one thing I didn't like, which is why I don't like Blake handling the ball so much, is he waits to... But you know why he is doing that, though. Tia Dosage is, is hurt. I know... He was the primary playmaker I get it. other than Blake. I understand at this point, Blake is probably the best playmaker on the team because Tia Dosage is hurt. But when you get the ball, if they're doubling you, that means you have to go quickly. The... In that um in that um Warriors game they had, in the last two minutes or the last three minutes of the quarter, when he got the ball and he went quickly, he scored like eight points in a row. Draymond Green also wasn't on the floor. But Whatever, right. get the ball and go. I don't give a I don't give a damn if Dennis Rodman on the court. Don't get the ball and hold the ball and wait for the double team to come. Get the ball and go. Get the ball, go to the rim. There is no reason Draymond Green should be able to literally defend Blake Griffin when nobody else can. Blake, you are dead ass, more physically imposing than half of the league. And you can jump out the gym, still. Do you see he dunked on like three people today? Still you can jump well, out the gym. Well, they play the Grizzlies and Blake Griffin dunked on like three people. Still you can jump out the gym. There is no reason you should ever be defended. This is the Blake look like the Blake, which in in on which I say, yo, playoff Blake don't never show up. I tweeted he this, looked like I that tweeted Blake. this the other day. I, I disagree with that. Playoff Blake is a different Blake than Draymond Green. I tweeted this the other day during the game. Draymond Green is Blake Griffin's kryptonite. I don't want to hear that. This is your team. I understand that, but Draymond Green, every player in the league has someone where they always have their number. I don't want to hear that. With Steph Curry, that person is Avery Bradley. Because even when Avery Bradley was with the Celtics, the Celtics would always play great against the Warriors because Avery Bradley is a top-level defender, and he has Steph Curry's number. I guarantee you he still scored like 20, and but, I guarantee you he won that bad. But, he, but I think Blake scored 20 in that game. But it was bad. But but that's not the point. You talking to me about numbers. We're not talking about who won the game. But even if the way he looks, like Steph don't he didn't look bad. He got ripped up by Avery a couple times in that game that they were playing against Avery the Pistons. Avery Bradley rips a lot of people up, but that, but, but that don't mean Steph looked but, bad. But what I'm saying is that. Blake but, looked but, bad. That's not what I'm saying, though. What I'm saying is that Draymond Green is just his kryptonite. Every player has one person that they play against where they just don't play well against. And Draymond Green is that one guy. Draymond Green, really Draymond Green, and even today he played Marc Gasol. He put up like 30 on his head. I mean, he wasn't really big. Marc wasn't guarding him. But they had like James Ennis the second guard him. Regardless. That's different from even when they play the Even when they play the Grizzlies, for the most part, Blake Griffin plays well. He just has no, he to. he don't. When they play the Grand House, when he, when no, he was yes, playing against Zebo, no, he did not. He plays well, but not well enough to win. But you also would used to argue me back then that Chris Paul was the leader and the number one option on the team. So if I'm Blake, it's a different situation. In this situation, as you said before, you got to go. But Blake, to me, is still going to be all right. He'll be, Draymond Green just has his number. He'll be fine, but that's not what I want to see from you, Blake. First of all, Blake is still – first of all, I would I would like to see Blake average more rebounds. I don't like Blake only giving me 8.1 rebounds. I would like to see him give me about 10. Even, even with DeAndre – have, you know, putting up the numbers that he's putting yes, up. Yes, and I would also even like with DeAndre to, averaging fifteen point three boards a game. Yes, and I would also still like for Blake to give me a block. Give me a block. Become. I still think Blake needs to become better defensively. Give me a block a game, dog. I agree, and I still think that Blake needs to finish this season, which he is still shooting forty three percent from the three I don't in seven that. games, which is in, ridiculous. But he's only averaging twenty two point nine. In order for this Clippers team to be successful, Blake Griffin has to match his best year to me personally, which was in 2013-2014 when he yeah. put up 24, 9.5, 3.9 assists, 1.2 steals a game, and half a block. With Blake Griffin, for this Clippers team to get to where I think they will be, which is the third seed in the conference, has to average 25, 9, 5 assists a game, a steal, and a half a block. I He's agree. at .3 blo- bl- blocks right now. But I agree. I'm still taking the Clippers to win this game. I think the Thunder. I don't. Will win this I don't game. believe in the Thunder. The I think Thunder. The Thunder will win this game. We, we talking about? Are you a believer or not? I got on. A, I got on this Russ jersey. I would like to formally, for the first two weeks of the NBA season, look you in your eyes and say, "I apologize about Russell Westbrook." 
all the things you told me that he could do on a good team that I argue that he couldn't do because he wasn't doing them on a good team, he is now doing. So much to the fact where I actually am kind of mad at him sometimes. Like, go get the ball. I no actually one can think stop Russ is you. overpassing. I, no, no, I think Russ is overpassing a lot. But, but I think Russ is doing the same thing Kyrie's doing, which is I'm the MVP. I'm, I'm a cha- Kyrie situation. I'm a champion. I don't need to fucking act like I'm better than you, or I'm better than you, or I'm better than you. We all know I am. We all know I'm arguably a top five player in the NBA. We all know I'm arguably the best point guard in the NBA, even though he's not in my top three. But he's playing this year like he's a top three, top two point guard because he's overpassing, as you said. And this year, the vision that I'm seeing from Russ. He had it last year. He just wanted nobody to pass to. Uh, he had it last year, but last year, Russ was going up the court looking to make a play for himself before anyone else. Who do you make a play for? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, last year, Russ was running up the court looking to make a play before anyone, I mean, for himself before anyone else. This year, he's going, he's, you know how when quarterbacks, they go through their progressions. So they go through one read, then they go through the second one. Yeah. He's going through his progressions before he's thinking, I'm, I know that number one is about to run a fade in the corner, so I'm going to throw it to number one. I saw him in the game actually versus um, the Celtics. Russ ran up the floor. He caught the ball on the rebound. He ran up the floor. It was either Abrines or Jerry and Grant. I can't remember which one of them. Went to the corner. W- went to the top right hand corner. Russ went up the corner. I don't even. I don't even know how he saw him. They bounced from near where the box was on the right side to the like the you no know, more the right side of it to the top of the three. And Russ went to the middle of the paint. Didn't even look at the guy and threw a on point bounce pass to him for a wide open three. That's what I'm looking for from Russell Westbrook. You have to pass people open, get them the ball in the spaces, and not always be looking to shoot. Because when Russell Westbrook wants to turn it on, I tweeted the other day, as dominant as Steph Curry is on the perimeter, Russ is on the offensive end, on uh, going to the rim. So he can get points, but you yeah. have to make people better. But go ahead. Like I said about Russ, my main thing I've, so I said about Russ is like, look, last year he was forced to play with a team that was built for Kevin Durant. This is the first time you've seen Russell Westbrook with a team that's built for him, which is why Paul George is a better option to play with um, Russ than even KD was because Paul George catch and shoot, and he knows he's not as good. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant's better than Russell Westbrook, but sometimes, man, it don't look like it. Sometimes when they play the OKC, it ain't look like it. There is a further gap between, look, I think there is a further gap between Russ and Paul George than there was sometimes between Russ and Kevin Durant. And that's also because of Russ's personality. Kevin Durant is a fucking better player. Listen, I know he's a better player. He's a way better player. But that's also because of personality. And also, they were younger at that point in time. Russ is older. Even age and you getting plasma shots and this shit. All this other stuff, yo, usage rate being 44%, you don't want to go through that again. I guarantee you, Russ was tired as hell this summer. You do not want to go through that again.